Hey, welcome back to the library. How you guys doing? Everyone vaccinated? This episode is going to be really, really goofy. Mascot racing games found their groove during the third bit era of gaming. While the trend and popularity can easily be tracked back to the original Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, the genre really didn't have its oversaturation period until the PlayStation and Nintendo 64. Our focus here is on Nicktoons Racing, featuring a who's who of characters from the various Nickelodeon cartoon shows. A very rough cartoon intro provides what little story that line there is. The characters are gathered to compete to prove their skills at kart racing. Each character has their own unique vehicle, and each cartoon is represented by a stage or two. What's nice is that the characters are all at the same skill level. The only difference is their visuals. So anyone who wants to main one character for the rest of the game won't be punished or gain an advantage over another character. The roster includes characters from Rugrats, Spongebob Squarepants, Cat Dog, The Wild Thornberries, Hey Arnold, Ah, Real Monsters, The Angry Beavers, and then Just Stimpy from The Ren and Stimpy Show. A final character only known as the Mystery Rider waits for you at the finish line. If you successfully gain all gold medals in the Easy Cup, you'll unlock him and the next difficulty setting. One of the first things that jumps out at the player are the visuals. In having a diverse cast of characters, the developers did an admirable job of trying to convey the differences in the varying art styles. SpongeBob levels are bright and crisp. Rugrat stages are subdued in colors so the racers stand out more, and so forth. It's not perfect, but it's easily picked up after a few races. Characters are bright and bold and have a wonderful complement to their cart designs. Patrick has his sailboat, Stimpy has his kitty litter, and Tommy with his reptar-themed cart. Little touches like how the swimming creatures and bubble effects in SpongeBob stage are supposed to mean that you're underwater add to the cuteness of it all. Sound, however, is a mixed bag. Voice samples are fine, if a tiny bit scratchy, but in the game's menu system, the designers added the most annoying boingy boingy sound I've ever heard, and it's on permanent repeat until you choose something. Audio tracks are all inspired from the cartoon shows, so it is what it is there. Gameplay and control are standard procedure for the genre, with an exception I'll save for later. Gas, brake, reverse, jump, and power slide are all instantly recognizable to anyone who's ever picked up Mario Kart. Where Nicktoons Racing takes a hard left into Crazy Town are its power-ups and its risk versus reward system. Power-ups are based on actual items from the various cartoons, but a few of them are rooted in by-the-book practices. The slime and kitty litter are just banana peels. SpongeBob's bubble is just a red shell, while Darwin's coconuts are the green shell. The truly unique items are found in the Angry Beaver's Time Machine, which warps you ahead one spot in the race, and then the Thornberry's Totem Magic, which steals the power up from a nearby racer before they can use it. Of concern, however, is the Thornberry's Camera Flash. Activating it causes a very jarring instant white flash to pop up on screen, blocking the player's view for a second. I'm not epileptic in any way, but it really caught me off guard the first time it happened. I would probably offer a very concerned warning for folks who might suffer from epilepsy. With that out of the way, let's talk about where Nicktoons really shines. It's risk reward system. Removing power-ups from the equation, stages are equipped with three angles of attack. Alternate paths, speed boosts, and I kid you not, calculated decisions. Let's start with the alternate paths. These can be split up into shortcuts and actual alternate paths. Shortcuts are small, hiding-in-plain-sight land advantages that grant players a few tenths of a second savings. These are often behind their own entry frame or a rock wall to make them more interesting to find. Alternate paths are where the track will split into two or three different options, with each choice providing a particular reward. My personal favorite is found in the Race Madness track. Right out of the starting gate, the track splits into three lanes. The farthest left provides speed orbs to stash or use. The middle lane offers the easiest turn and a power-up. The third is littered with speed panels, but the hardest of turns. Each path is a calculated decision, and within that choice comes its own risk and reward. Do players forego the power-up and just hope to speed panel ahead, or do they take the left path and hope they can keep the boosts long enough to make it to the next stash? Or they might come across a speed panel, a power-up, and a speed orb, but they can only have one. It's these moments where the player has opponents barreling down on them, making split-moment decisions, yet calculating how to approach it on the next lap that absolutely provides reason enough 
to play Nicktoons Racing. At least until you explore the other menu options. If we forgive the menu audio, Nicktoons Racing's biggest crime is that several design choices almost completely unravel all the goodwill that's been built up to this point. Of the smaller crimes is the track menu. Rather than using still images to convey the tracks, short video clips are used. The PlayStation must quickly load each video clip as you move about the choices. If you toggle between the cups, it's even more loading time. Furthermore is the bizarre and oftentimes uneven opponent abilities. Sometimes everything is a far fair fight. Other times you'll be nailed by three separate racers in the same moment, one right after the other. Underscore that with a, what is a lack of rubber bending in the game. Unless something extreme happens, the other five racers are typically near each other. This allows for some very fast catching up, but spells disaster if you're near the finish line and get dinged. But the ultimate crime, the one that keeps Nicktoons Racing from being a truly must-own game, is the Race for Fun mode. First and foremost, this mode isn't fun, because it's the racing equivalent of a survival mode. According to the manual, every time you race, you earn a trophy. These trophies are objects found within the cartoons themselves, like a cheese wheel or a giant sombrero. So if you win five races in a row, you would earn five trophies, and you do. But, if you lose once, it's all trashed and you start from zero. Players lose everything in a game that can decimate them in three seconds? In a kid's game, no less? If there were only five trophies to worry about, this would be a fun challenge. But if the icon sizes are to be a measurement of what there is, there's at least 24 to unlock, and worse, the game isn't clear on how to unlock them all. After the first five, I didn't win anything again until my eighth win in a row. That reward was on a different track. So either there's a set amount of trophies per track, or the number of wins grows exponentially between each next win. Thankfully, there is an annoying way to game the system. After a successful run and trophy reveal, players can escape all the way back to the tile screen, go into options, and save their game. This way, if the next race is a loss, a simple reload will get you back into the chase. It's super annoying, but it's the only thing keeping that mode alive. There are more easily accessed unlockables in the game to chase, though. Snagging all three gold cups on medium will unlock the big city cleanup for single players. Here, you must collect all the prizes within a city neighborhood before time runs out. Unlocking all three hard gold cups opens up the beach soccer multiplayer game, which is essentially Rocket League. I had to cut my time with Nicktoons short in order to get this review out on time, but in reality, all I have left are to sort the fun modes trophies and just how exactly it's done. For players looking to enjoy a kart racing game that doesn't involve Mario, they could do much worse. Nicktoons Racing has enough going for it to be casually enjoyed, but those looking for a 100% completion run will be met with frustration along with the enjoyment. The risk-reward system is worth the ones through, and the hidden areas are well thought out, but only if one is willing to forgive the last two stages and poor menu decisions. On the Game Rave Review scale, it's a good game at a 6 out of 10. And there you have it, guys. Um, what I forgot to put into the script uh, is with those last two stages... Um, it's, one's a city and one's like a kind of, kind of volcano area, but in the city, it's so big and with the volcano, it's so involved that the system can't keep up with it. And a lot of times the frame rate will just come chugging to a halt. And especially in the volcano stage, almost all the turns in the volcano stage are 90 degrees or less. So you literally have to do a power slide 180 to even have a chance of making the turn or you're left behind by the other players. Um, as I'm recording this for the third time because of different technical difficulties, um, I've actually unlocked more and more of the trophies in that fun mode. Um, and it seems that my second theory was right where it's basically each track has a certain amount of trophies but the game doesn't tell you when you're done. So if you unlock the first five of this track and then you win again, you don't get a trophy. That means you just wasted that turn and the potential loss of losing the trophies. And then you move on to the next track, etc. What's weird is that the number of trophies per track seems to change. So it's like what I thought would have ended up like ending, like at the actual end of the three cups might actually end somewhere in the second cup races, which is weird. But it is what it is. If you guys have ever played it, let me know what you thought of it. If not, questions and comments below. I will see you guys later. Keep getting vaccinated. Keep being safe out there. 
Lord knows there are variants we don't want to collect out there. Take care, you guys. Have a good one.